In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to this worship here together. Let us open our hearts and pray. God of abiding love, present in all our beginnings, acquainted with all our ways, intricately woven into the depths of all things. You understand our thoughts from far off and know our ways intimately. As we gather to worship you, nothing is hidden from you. May we recognize your voice in our midst. And as we gather to give you thanks and praise, may we relish all of the days you have written for us. As we sing, pray and tell our stories, grant that when we come to see the end of ourselves, we would find you. Amen. And let us confess our sins. Loving God, full of grace, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. We thank you, everlasting God, for your unending love, for giving us, for forgiving us our sins through Jesus Christ helping us make amends and leading us to new life in you. Amen. And now we sing a hymn. You'll have to bear with me to sing it, maybe with you. Take my life and let it be. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the image of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee.
Now the gospel reading for today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 43, the following. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Oh, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael ap approaching, he said of him, here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Nazareth was a big, a bit of a nowhere place in Israel. Not a great, great place to, um, to grow up in or not a good place to put on your CV when you're applying for a job as a place of origin. In fact, there had, if there had been Facebook back then, you would not have acknowledged that you were from there on any social media. It did not feature in any Old Testament prophecies no great persons had come from there, and it wasn't the seat of any power. It was a simple inland town. No great schools, colleges, universities. It wasn't known for any great thing or anything in particular at all. Jesus came from Nazareth. And despite the setbacks of being from there, the Nazarene Jesus had insight and intuition that the best background, geography, and education cannot give. He knew people from inside. He knew their nature, their motivation, their dreams, their desires. Maybe that is what made him notice Nathanael under that fig tree, fig tree. In the First Testament, the Hebrew Bible, sitting under your own fig tree, is a symbol of comfort and of a rich blessing. Again and again in the scriptures, we find this image which evokes feelings of longing for peace and for safety and consolation. To be under your own fig tree was to have arrived, to um, have settled down, to be home at last. Nathanael was sitting in that space. Strangely, though, there is a restlessness in our human spirit that might be satisfied with our own particular circumstances for a little while, but then there is that longing and a yearning for more. Was it this that Jesus sensed in Nathanael? Did he see in the shaded man something restless, wanting to grow? Nathanael wasn't impressed with Philip's news about Jesus. Can anything good come from Nazareth? I came across an interesting def definition of a heretic the other day. It defined a heretic as someone who is unteachable, 
someone who thinks they are all set, know it all and uh, know it all better. Prejudice and arrogance make us so unteachable. Nathanael was bordering on heresy here. Philip, however, ignored Nathanael's cynicism about people from Nazareth. He just said, come and see, come. It is the most simple and most effective invitations, the beginning of growth and liberation. Come and see. It's the best evangelism we've got. It is not just enough to stand far off in our comfort zones, sit under our own little comfortable tree, lean our backs against, think about life and how happy we are, and that's great for a while. However, in the long term, it's not enough. It's not enough to formulate our own opinions under a, a safe distance. We have to come out of there and see. We have to walk away from it and see. That is what will really change our lives. Jesus finds Nathanael right where he is in his comfortable zone, his fig tree shadow, the place of his prejudiced opinions. And then Jesus leads him on to greater adventures. He tells Nathanael he will see the heaven open and angels ascending and descending. And he is referring here, of course, to the story in the book of Genesis, chapter 28, where um, Jacob experienced in a dream heaven opening and he saw angels coming down from a heavenly staircase and, and ascending up again. And when he woke up, when Jacob woke up, he called this place Bethel, which is Hebrew, Beit El, Beit El means house of God. And he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I didn't know it. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. So he had no idea. Now, what would happen if we walked out from under there? We don't know yet, do we? Going back to Nathanael, according to what we know, it would seem that Nathanael actually never did see what Jacob saw. Instead, he saw the Nazarene Jesus, whom he followed. He saw an amazing teacher. He saw a miracle healer, a man with a very mixed following, but a, but a big following, who in the end was despised, and he was rejected and crucified and utterly destroyed. It was the opposite of a dream. It was a true nightmare. And the next and only time we hear of Nathanael again after this meeting with Jesus under the fig tree is on the shore of the Sea of Galilee in one of those mysterious post-resurrection events. And we read about it in the Gospel of John chapter 21. And I wonder if Nathanael then remembered as he stood there in the presence of the risen one, the words he heard those three adventurous years before, you will see greater things than this. Nathanael surely had, he had seen amazing things following Jesus, walking out from underneath the tree. Perhaps if we get out from underneath the shade of our own prejudiced, comfortably set opinions, may we see greater things too. We'll have a little time of meditation now.
Will you come and follow me? Let us sing. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator of all, we thank you for Nathanael who showed us to rise from under our own inner place of comfort to follow you in thoughts, in word, and by what we do. Help us to keep our hearts and minds open to the surprises you have for us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. With grave concern, we watch the frightening national upheavals in the United States take place and the ongoing incitement and threat of further violence as we come closer to the inauguration of Joe Biden. We pray for insight, for wisdom, for a change of heart when necessary, for a strengthening of forces for the good. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, you taught us to pray for our enemies. And so we pray for those near and far who incite hatred and civil unrest. For those whose minds are set on conspiracy theories and who spread lies. For the enemies of equality. We pray for racists, white supremacists, misogynists. For bad leaders and their followers, that you may give them insight, wisdom and a change of heart for the good. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we now pray for all who suffer from racism in their daily life, 
from the frustration of unequal treatment at school or at work, unequal pay. For those who suffer from poverty, from lack of food, work, education. For those who suffer bad payment, though they keep up, keep our society going in this time, the nurses and other healthcare workers, delivery drivers, postal workers, supermarket staff, and teachers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are ill and weak, for those who fear for their lives, for those who are tired of living, for those who are worn out by caring for others, for all healthcare staff suffering from exhaustion and trauma. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The concerns of our own hearts and our own lives we bring to you now in some silence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now let's go with the blessing of the Lord. God bless us today that what that we may be a blessing in our seeing in our hearing in our speaking God bless us today that we may be a blessing in our reaching in our holding in our letting go God bless us today that we may be a blessing in our thinking in our feeling in our loving. Amen. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>